and welcome to the program Upon This Rock. I'm Jan Marie, your host. Upon This Rock is a program and a ministry designed to showcase various apostolates or outreaches that are doing a wonderful work here in a local community, nationally and throughout the world. On the program, I have a very special guest, Father Robert DeGrandis. Father DeGrandis is a Roman Catholic priest who was ordained in 1959. He has written over 30 books which have been translated into 15 languages. His international healing ministry has taken him to over 40 countries. Our topic is Receive Inner Healing. Welcome to the program, Father DeGrandis. Thank you, Jan Marie. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. And it's a privilege to have you back once again on the program. We had such a wonderful response from our viewers to previous programs, uh, such as Healing the Dysfunctional Family and Healing Past Hurts to Inner Healing, that viewers asked to have you back on again. Wonderful. Well, I'm always ready to get on television. I, <laughs> I think if St. Paul were alive today, he'd be on television. Well, we have some wonderful testimonies we're going to share, so mm -hmm. stay with us, viewers. You'll want to hear these healing testimonies from previous programs. But before we get into our topic, Father, for those who might be seeing you for the first time, how would you describe your main ministry? My main ministry is working with priests, uh, opening as much as I can people to the charisms of the Holy Spirit, especially the gift of healing which is so needed in our day and time. And that's an ordinary part of Christianity. Mark 16, 18 says, these are the signs that will follow believers. They'll lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. And then of course, the great commandment of Matthew 10, 8, preach the gospel and heal the sick. And so I work with priests and uh, we go through five days of preparation of openness to the Holy Spirit. See, the goal is not to have the Holy Spirit, but to let the Holy Spirit have you, lead you, guide you, work through you, to continue, continue the ministry of Jesus uh, through you. Well, we pray that the Holy Spirit will definitely lead and empower us to the rest of this program. Now, inner healing, receiving inner healing. For viewers who might not even know what inner healing is, could you please define that for us, Father? Yes, inner healing is asking the Holy Spirit to touch us in the inner part of our being, the memory, the will, the imagination, the intellect, the uh, the inner part of us, the inner faculties that uh, are touched by experiences of life, some of which are pleasant, some are neutral, and of course some experiences of life are painful, and that's imprinted in our spirit and, and in our memory, and we invite the Holy Spirit to come in through various methodologies to touch those hurts and pains. The best way to imagine it is a hard-boiled egg, the white of the egg is the memory, the yellow is the, the emotion, the pain. We invite the Holy Spirit to come in and with a spiritual eraser to take the pain out of the memory so that we can reflect upon the situation and it's no longer uh, a painful experience or an emotional experience, but a neutral experience. That's a beautiful example, Father, and I just want to share right now a couple of letters from viewers who were touched by the program, and then you have a couple you're going to share, and this is to build up your faith. This is from a previous show we did also on inner healing, and in hearing this, we hope you'll relate to that. Um, this first viewer writes, My husband and I wept as we did the guided meditation as led by Father Robert DeGrandis. I truly experienced the inner cleansing of being in the womb when my mother had her own issues with my father, financial, emotional, etc., and that I must forgive her. It's like a release, an emotional renaissance taking place. What a great service you're providing. I felt the infusion of the Holy Spirit taking place. Continue to be a blessing. And why don't you share a letter, Father? Sure. I was fortunate to watch the program on inner healing, and I was very happy after the prayers. Uh, please mail me the booklet on forgiveness and inner healing to enable me to learn more about prayer and to share my experiences with others. May the Lord always guide you in your programs. Beautiful. And I have one more here. I'm writing to tell you how much I enjoy your program. I try and watch it every time it's on, but I especially like to watch when you have Father DeGrandis on. I receive spiritual <laughs> healing every time I see him. And she even shared, Father, how she was healed at a Mass that you said. Uh -huh. And then she says, I really love your program. Please keep it on the air. Thank you. And I think you have one more you'd like sure. to share. I just caught the last moments of your program. I've never seen it before. And I, you have no idea how much the small part 
of the prayer of forgiveness that I did hear had an impact on me. So much healing and forgiveness from my childhood is necessary. I was sexually abused. My father was an alcoholic. My mother never shielded us from anything. Please send the forgiveness prayer to me. Love, peace, and joy. Isn't that beautiful? And we know those letters represent hundreds of people who didn't take the time to write, but we know who also were touched. And because forgiveness is so essential to inner healing, I'm going to ask Father if you would please lead us in a shortened version of the forgiveness prayer, and then from there we'll go into a deeper inner healing prayer as Father moves in the gift of word of knowledge. This is a forgiveness prayer, and I'm going to ask people to close their eyes and to picture Jesus standing in front of them with his hands on their head saying, I've come that you may have life, I've come to make you happy, I've come to give you my peace. And just make the prayer your own as I read through it. Loving Father, I choose to forgive everyone in my life including myself, because you have forgiven me. Thank you, Lord, for this grace. And I forgive myself for all my faults, failings, sins, and especially for, just think of the one thing that you're most ashamed of in life and give it to the Lord. I forgive myself for not being perfect and I accept myself as I am and make a decision to stop picking on myself and being my own worst enemy. I release to God the things I hold against myself. I free myself from bondage and make peace with myself today by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I forgive my mother for any negativity and in love she may have extended to me throughout my life, knowingly or unknowingly, especially think of the one thing that your mother did that hurt you the most, Give, extend forgiveness to her. For any abuse of any sort, I do forgive her today for the way she did not provide me with the deep, full, satisfying mother's blessing. I truly forgive her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release her from bondage and I make peace with her today. I forgive my father for any negativity and unlove he extended to me throughout my life, knowingly or unknowingly, especially think of the one thing your father did that hurt you the most and tell the Lord that you do forgive him. For all unkind acts, hurts, deprivations, I do forgive my Father. For any way I did not receive a full, satisfying Father's blessing, I forgive him today. I release him from bondage and make peace with him. I forgive my spouse for any negativity and unlove extended throughout our time together, especially here, mention the one thing your spouse did that hurt you the most. For all the wounds of our relationship, I do forgive my spouse today, and I make peace with, him, with them. I forgive my children for the hurts, and especially think of the main hurt each child inflicted. I release them from bondage and make peace with them today. Lord Jesus, I forgive my brothers and sisters. I forgive my blood relatives. I forgive my ancestors for any negative actions that affect my life or the life of my family today. I release them from bondage and make peace with them today in the name of Jesus Christ. I forgive my friends for any actions of negativity and unlove, especially think of your best friends and anything they did that hurt you.
for the times they abused our relationship or led me astray, I do forgive them and release them to the Lord. Lord, I forgive all clergy and all representative, representatives of the church and especially think of the one church person that hurt you the most. Tell the Lord you do forgive them by an act of the will. I release them all in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I now ask for the grace to forgive the one person in life who hurt me the most, the one who's hardest to forgive. I now do choose to forgive, though I may still feel angry and hurt. I also make peace with the one family member, the one friend, and the one authority figure who has hurt me the most. Lord, is there anyone else I need to forgive? Just listen for a moment and see if the Lord speaks to you of someone you need to forgive. Thank you, loving Father, for setting me free. I now pray a blessing on those who have hurt me. Lord, do something for each of them today that is healing and helpful. Thank you, Lord. I praise you and worship you. Amen. That was very powerful prayer, Father. And I see we're halfway through our program, so I'd like to invite you, our viewers, to get your pen or paper ready because just for writing us, we're happy to send you a free inner healing prayer. And if you can, be so kind as to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. That will help us out a bit. And Father, a lot of people think that in order to forgive, they have to feel that they forgive, they, that they can't feel angry or hurt. And we know that forgiveness is not an act of the emotions, it's an act of the will, correct? That is correct, just like love. Parents love their children even when they do very hurtful things. And even when they disgrace the family, they still love their children. So uh, a best example would be Romans 12, 14. Paul says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not condemn. If I'm persecuting you, you do not feel good. Say I'm hitting you on the head with a stick. Uh, you don't feel good, but as a Christian, you have to forgive me. And how do you do that? By praying for me. Biblical forgiveness means that you pray for the person for the blessings that you want for yourself. Happiness, holiness, healing, helpfulness to, one, to other people. So as long as you're praying for that person, you can be absolutely certain that your heart is open. Which brings up the article that was in USA Today some months ago can we forgive the terrorist? And I was really shocked. Most people said, no, you can't forgive the terrorist of 9-11. Jesus makes a distinction between the, the action and the wound. We have to forgive people for their action, but we'll ha oftentimes we have to live with the wound. So and if you don't separate the two, then you might be led to the conclusion we can't forgive. Well, Father, I used your excellent book entitled Healing the Brokenhearted to prepare for this program, and I know we're going to focus on three basic areas, healing for family members to forgive them, also for healing for forgiving God and His representatives, and then finally, healing the person who hurt us the most. And I just want you to feel free to follow the Holy Spirit's leading for any type of inner healing prayer that you might want to lead the viewers in in those areas. And shall we begin with? Why not begin with forgiving God and his representatives? Yes, I will talk a little about this because many people would say you cannot forgive God. He, everything he does is perfect, and that's true. But our perception it can engender uh, a lot of anger within us. One priest told me more people stop practicing their religion when one of their children dies, especially young children, because they're so angry at God for letting this child die, get hit by an automobile, uh, uh, drink some poison or something like that. So uh, yes, we do need to forgive the Lord only insofar as it cleanses the blockage within us. I remember one time 
uh, a friend of mine was telling me she was praying for a woman with a bad back and uh, as she prayed for the woman who had a lot of pain in her back the Lord spoke to my friend and said she needs to forgive me and so my friend said do you need to forgive the Lord and she said after hesitation yes she said my mother was a wonderful Christian she died a slow agonizing death and I've never been able to forgive the Lord for that. So we need to let go of the blockage we feel within ourselves. I remember giving a priest retreat in Guatemala and I was saying the forgiveness prayer and one priest put up his hand and said, well, how can you forgive God? Everything he does is perfect. And another priest came up and snatched the microphone out of my hand and said, look at he said, my brother, was killed by the guerrillas two years ago, and I've been so angry at God. So it's better to admit it and let it come up, let it surface. And, and many people do. They say, you know, if we have such a good God, how can he let evil happen in this incident or that incident? And that, that is a mystery, how God uh, lets evil pervade. But we do need to release the anger, the bitterness, the resentfulness that we feel within ourselves. So let's just close our eyes and pray for that. Lord Jesus, as we picture you with your hands on our head communicating your love and your healing, we pray that we can release and forgive. We ask to release all the bitterness, resentment, anger that's pent up within us, especially if we've had a, a, a miscarriage or a stillbirth or one of our children has died suddenly or at a young age or there's an unhappy marriage, Lord. Whatever the situation and we feel you're responsible, maybe someone said God's sending punishments to you Give us the grace just to release and let go and say, Yes, Lord, I know you love me. Cleanse my heart and my mind. Purify my spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And I know there's many more beautiful examples in your book, Father, but due to time we cannot share mm -hmm. all of those. So we'll go on to the next uh, chapter that I felt led to share on. And that was forgiving our family members. Sometimes we hurt the people we love the most, don't we? Absolutely. And, you know, I heard a priest say recently, every functional, every family is dysfunctional because people are dysfunctional to the, to the extent that we're all victims of original sin, that the sin of Adam and Eve has come down and it has weakened the will and clouded the intellect, that we do suffer the effects of original sin. And there's no one that has not been hurt in some way by a father, by mother. And oftentimes it's misunderstanding, misperception, but still a, a real hurt. And there's hurt between brothers and sisters. And the more we can just isolate these events and pray into them, the more peaceful we feel, the more healing we're going to get. I remember the example in your book, Father, was about a person who they had a tiff with their family about an inheritance and after that they were not speaking with one another? I would say 25% of families have a tiff about inheritance. <laughs> this, is, this is the big thing I hear from adults when it comes to brothers and sisters, the division of uh, the patrimony, the father's wealth or the family wealth. Uh, just recently, I heard a woman complaining that the mother gave the money to the grandchildren and bypassed this woman and her sister. And she was really upset about it. And so, yes, there's a tremendous need for family healing. Feel free to use the gift of word of knowledge, Father, mm -hmm. as you say right. this prayer. All right, let's just close our eyes and ask the Lord to bring to mind the one event that he wants us to be healed of today. Lord Jesus, we ask you to surface the one memory 
from the family, maybe the most painful event of our family life. We know, Lord, that oftentimes we're loved by mother and father, sisters and brothers, but there's misunderstandings, misperceptions, and we become bitter and resentful and angry, and we cause confusion in the family and upsetment. We ask you now, Lord, just to give us the grace to release and let go the bitterness and hatred and anger towards any family member. Thank you, Lord, that you want to heal us and bring us peace and joy. We ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we have five minutes left, Father, and I just want to ask you, what should people begin to expect after they say these prayers, some type of a release, or what might their experience be? It varies from person to person. Some people have a very dramatic effect. Uh, they feel something just like a heavy weight lift off their shoulders. Uh, and some people feel nothing, but then begin to notice changes in their attitude towards the person. So it's pretty hard to say this is going to happen because we're working in the realms of the spirit, in the spiritual realm, and it's very difficult. To, you can't pin down things in the spiritual realm very easily. So it can vary from being very dramatic just to being very subtle. Yes, but something happens when you pray. There, there are no losers in the prayer ministry. Prayer is always answered in some way if it's sincere. So, yes, continue praying even though you think nothing is happening. For example, you don't feel your heart beating right now. You don't feel your stomach digesting the granola you had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't feel the internal workings of your body, but you know it's going on. Huh? Yes. We don't see it or hear, hear it or feel it, but we know it's going on the same way in the spirit, the spirit world, things are happening even though we don't feel them or perceive them. We're exercising our spiritual muscles, I think. There's a good analogy between working out. Sometimes you start working out, if you haven't worked out for a long time, you can really feel the pain of it. Mm -hmm. But once you get into it, all of a sudden you don't realize how you're losing weight, you're having better muscle tone, until all of a sudden you're in great shape. I think there's a, a spiritual analogy to that too. The more we start walking with the Lord, Definitely. The better it gets. The stronger we become spiritually. Mm -hmm. So let's exercise those spiritual muscles again as you lead us into this third segment of healing the person who has hurt us the most. Okay. Uh, as we begin to look into this subject, I think one of the areas that we should talk about is abuse, uh, especially verbal abuse. There's so much verbal abuse in families, and uh, people say things that hurt others. I, I'll never forget a woman in Brazil telling me her uncle said to her mother when the girl was 12 years old, "This girl will be nothing good. For, for she wants nothing good. For, now wait a minute. She won't be any good for anything but to be a prostitute." Oh my goodness! Here's a woman, 39 years old. And she's saying, I'm still haunted by that. And we really prayed and prayed and prayed, asking the Lord to heal that painful memory. So there's a lot of verbal abuse in families that needs to be healed. There's physical abuse, brutality. Some of the things I hear about brutality in the family, I wouldn't repeat. They're so horrible. And then, of course, there's sexual, uh, sexual uh, abuse. So I encourage people who are in any of those categories to, to really give it to the Lord today. To when present. a relative says something so derogatory to a child, that's a word curse, isn't it, Father? Yes, people would say that, yeah. It has but, an extra special power to bring something evil upon the child, whereas parents also have the power to bless Mm -hmm. As parents or relatives, there's a special power that God gives them to bless. And sometimes they don't realize that, the power of their words, given their position as a parent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we can never uh, pray over our children enough. We can never bless them enough and be very cautious about what you say negative. Always try to be positive. Right. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we ask you to take us back to that episode that was the most negative and traumatic 
in our family, uh, even in the community. And we ask for the grace to forgive the one person who hurt us the most. Touch them, Lord. Touch us. Heal us. Set us free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Father, I see we're just about to the end of our program, so I want to thank you for being on the program. And I feel that I'm going to say a short prayer with our viewers just to open your heart to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. As it says in Romans, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. We know there's a lot more to it than that. You need to receive baptism, join a Christian community. And as Catholics, we are born again through baptism. And also we receive the Holy Spirit in a very special way in confirmation. So just open your heart to receive the Lord Jesus if you don't know him. And don't forget to write us at the address that you'll see at the end of the closing credits for that free inner healing prayer. And enclose a self-addressed stamped envelope if you can. And give us some feedback. We'd love to hear from you. It would encourage us greatly. If you have any testimonies like we read at the beginning of the show, you were healed physically, spiritually, emotionally, just give us a note then. We'd be happy to get back to you. May our Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you with his peace and his joy.